Here I am using the same birch cling stamp. The more I look at this stamp, the more possibilities I am seeing. We used it like this to create a rock formation and ocean. And I even use some of these as clouds. This time I'm gonna turn it upside down. And as I look at this, that right there looks like a dead tree stump. You know, it, it could even be, if it was colored a certain way, it could even look like a wave. And then I was looking at it like this. It's like, this is like the tree. This would be how the bark would be on the tree. And this would be like a broken branch. You know, if you wanted to have a big old tree on your card, you could just ink this section right here, a vertical way. And then with the appropriate coloring, you could make it look like a tree. And then you could have do something different to the right. There's probably more. And I'm, I'm looking at it thinking, okay, what would I do if I have a stump? Do I want it at the bottom of the picture, at the top of the picture? You could have like a shoreline right here. And that could be water over there. Maybe you could kind of create a, a bay. That's a possibility too. And I'm also looking at this. This looks like a, kind of a stone edge. That, that's very interesting too. I haven't got an idea for it yet, but I'm, I'm looking at that. Um, it's this that seems to just keep giving me different inspiration. Let me look at it this way. Now see, that looks like a knot hole, like a hole in the wood. Yeah, this would be better for the tree. It's funny how you look at it different ways and you see something different. I see a tree stump. I see a broken off branch. This way, I see rocks, like a cliff edge. It's just amazing how every time you look at it, you can see something different. I am going to use it like that. And I'm going to use blue this time because I'm thinking of green grass and blue will work with shadows. I want some light colors in here because I want it to look like a dead stump. I suppose it could get slightly darker down in there. It's um, partially rotted away. Let's see, I wanna put just a little bit of orange in there just to kind of warm it up a little bit more. I'm thinking that this is grass and I will put it where I see these dark blue spots. These are like shadows. First, I'm gonna color it this way, but then I'm gonna come back in and add some, some detail to it. These are like the dark shadows. When you do rows of grasses to create it, the illusion of depth, you do have to have rose just like in the ocean right now i'm going side to side just to get the color in but what you can do is you can come in and you can make some grasses like this just kind of up and down or vertical create a little bit of grassy edges see those grasses yeah there could be some grasses growing up in here and i'm going to use a variety of different greens put a little bit of some warmer greens in here I'm just lightly doing it right now because I want to add some other colors in here, like some with a little bit more yellow in it. Because the more variety of greens, the more realistic we're going to get it to look. I may even add a little bit more yellow green. You want your warmest colors closest to you because warm colors tend to advance, come towards you, and cooler colors are going to recede into the background. I'll just go to this medium green. I wanna add some more every place where there's dark spots. I want some little tiny grasses standing up. So yes, I know I need to sharpen it and I will when I need to, but I'm still getting some lines. So we do an up and down motion. Thank you. 
down here towards the bottom, I can actually like push the grasses, make them a little bit taller because we are closest to the viewer. You want the grasses to get shorter and shorter as they go further back. Down here towards the bottom, we can have some taller grasses and we don't want them all the same color. So we want lots of variety. I go shorter back here, go back to this dark, add some. You could even add like some dark blue. Let me just find a dark blue here. That's the darkest blue. Indigo needs to be sharpened only in the very dark areas because it, it will have the appearance of looking kind of greenish because of all the green that's here. Okay, this is a very like warm green. I want to have some more bluer greens, um, kind of dullish. This one, we're not gonna put the color on as strong. We will do it a little lighter. I also wanna mix some blue in it. This is sort of a blue green. I'm trying to get it to be sort of a bluish green. At this very moment, I haven't got a plan. <laughs> I'm just looking at this background and I'm just kind of going with it to see what's going to develop. Do I want sky and clouds? Do I want to just have it keep on going or am I going to do something different back there? Maybe I'm cut that off and not use it at all. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. This is a very dull green. Olive green, yes. Olive green is not very bright. It could probably go in the darker areas. So I can go just a little bit heavier there. We'll hint at a few grasses, but not too many, because as you go further away, you don't see the grasses. So you want them to look kind of short. You know, there could be some tall grasses right behind this uh, stump. I think that would look good. Maybe some there, maybe some here look kind of good. And maybe right here. Okay, I think we need some blue. Where they're kind of clustered together, we'll just darken them just a little bit. Okay, one idea. I could make some bushes if I only use the top of this to make some bushes back there. Um, we could put some trees back there. They're short enough. They could look like distant trees. And that's sort of a grassy edge right there. So I could even put them like right down here. We might even still have some sky. Okay, I'm gonna use a soft sky. Just a little bit of sky color. Just so it's not white. Can you see it? It does have a little bit of sky color. So that means some of those are going to be clouds and they can be slightly below. I think I'll put it right like this. Okay, now I'll have to color those trees to make them actually look like something. First, let me put away my ink. I never leave my inks out because I have cats. Color of trees. I guess this is a summer picture. Let's see, which way is the light coming from? This side. Okay, we can use a little bit lighter color on the left side. And we need to darken up the trees, so we need some blue. I want to put a little bit more color on the darker side of the tree, just to give a little bit more dimension to the trees. I'm trying to stick to the right side of the tree mostly, just kind of splotching it a little bit. You don't need a whole lot of color. I'm treating the right side of the tree as a shadow side of the tree, so I want darker colors there. I'm just going to go over some of the blues just to make sure they are green so that the color mixes so the overall general appearance is green. Okay, we have some hills and we have some shadows down here at the base of the tree. Yeah, that one hit just perfect right in there, which is cool, and this looks good here. And we need brown for our tree trunks. Maybe just a few of the branches will show up. So we have created a scene. Let's do about the clouds. How about we just kind of make them kind of grayish? 
Now, I'm actually going to grab my white. Where's my white? Because the cool thing about oh, this light blue, the cool thing about these pencils is you can actually color a lighter color on top of the darker. Not all pencils can do this, but you can actually color a little bit of white on top of colors to lighten them a bit. And you can smudge the color. So I can subdue the clouds just a little bit. This is Prisma color, the white. Now they're not so dark. That works. Now I got these dots right there. I'm going to turn those into birds. Let's just lighten these back spaces so they're not so dark. So they have a little bit more subdued. I'm going to mix the colors here. This is kind of a burnishing effect as I'm blending and pressing really, really hard to uh, subdue these just these top colors. I've created a scene using our wood stamp. Isn't that funny? And so we've created another back using this birch wood stamp micro markers fine line 05 and this is 005 that's smaller i want the smallest one so it's got the smallest point let me zoom in so you can see we'll just turn these into little birds okay now i just have to decide how to use the card right here would be a good place to put a sentiment because there's really not a whole lot of stuff happening right there because we have got this little scene here and I've got a little scene here so right here would be a good place to put a sentiment so you know I think we could use a little bit of yellow I feel like the sun would just shine in just a little bit on this side so we'll just add some yellow just on the very left tips white edges on there. I don't want the edges to be too light. So I just want to make sure that there's color in there. Believe it or not, I have another idea. The more I look at this, the more I see. I haven't even used it as a wood stamp yet. <laughs> well, we're close. You have a stump. Or it could just look like a rock. I was trying to make it look like a stump. Now you gotta make it into a card. I used this right here to cut out my sentiment and I thought this would be a good message for a birthday card. God wanted to brighten up the world. We have a, a nature scene. This would be great for a guy. But I thought of something else. So I have these frames. Let's try something to make it a little bit more interesting. What if we kind of cut it up? And we could have like a little space. Not sure which one to do here. We could cut it into pieces and take out a little part of our, just to make it a little more interesting. Okay, I should tape these so that they don't slide. I want to put these evenly spaced. cut side is here. Now we just need to center it and I will cut that out. So we're just going to remove this little part and that could probably use somewhere. Maybe you put it inside the card and then we put this on it'll have a little gap. Whatever color our back of our card is it will show up. I just need to choose the color. It could be white. And that's okay, but I might want to choose a color. Not bad. I might try out different colors to see what I want it to be. This is how it looks with a green card. I bet black would look pretty nice too. Before I cut a piece of paper, I thought I would just try. I had this scrap. This is a darker, sort of a blue-green. That looks good. It uh, does similar color to what's in the shadows of the trees and that could work having a dark frame around here might be a good idea since this is going to be white i do want to try black i had embossed this uh previously because i was thinking about using it 
I don't know that I want to have this to be embossed, but I want to see the black color. It's probably a little hard for you to see, um, but I just want to see the black color. Probably won't use the embossed paper, but I wanted to see what it would look like. Maybe the black's a little too harsh. Yeah, I think I'll go with the dark green. Have me a new cutter. Um, I've been looking for a better cutter because I was so disappointed in the cutter that I was using. I had been using this cutter from Stampin' Up and I'm really annoyed with it. Um, I did buy extra blades before it went out of stock and they replaced it with a new one. But I've decided I don't like cutters that you have to replace a blade. I decided it would be much better to have a guillotine type cutter that you don't have to replace the blade. It's self-sharpening. So I will get longer use out of it. One thing I did like about this cutter is that it has this arm so that you can measure. Let me just put this down so I've got space to work. So that you can measure your paper and um, this paper is 11 inches wide and half of 11 is five and a half. So you, you, you know how to cut it. I do like that arm feature. When I take a sheet of paper, if I cut it in half, I, if I cut it at the five and a half mark. It's got this little bar that helps hold everything down too. So I put this at five and a half. Put it all the way up there. I don't need this, but it does have a magnet to help hold the paper in place, even though I don't really need that for this. And this little blade kind of holds it down. Not a blade, but just a, a bar that just helps to hold everything in secure. And this, I get a much cleaner cut. I was so annoyed with the other cutter because my cuts were had like a fuzzy little edge and I don't like that. I was just, I, w I wound up using my, my scissors, but I can't perfect cut perfectly straight with the pair of scissors. So I now have a better cutter that I'm really happy with. I got it off of Amazon. And it's going to last me for a very long time. I am going to use this. Continue. I'm going to use this to do my scoring. And my paper is, again, the arm. My paper is eight and a half. So I want to score it at four and a quarter. And I think I should just take the blade out. Because I'm only going to use the score. That's the only part of this machine that I'm going to use. So... I think that's a good idea. I'm going to take this right out. I'm not even going to keep the cutter in here so I don't make a mistake. I do have spare blades, but I'm not going to use them because I'm just dis I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed with this machine. Okay, now we put the card together. I think I'll put this piece on first. So oh, when you cut the card in half, you're going to have two cards. So I have another half and I can make a card out of that. I'll score it later off camera. All right. To glue, I'll put this on the mat. And this mat's useful so you don't get glue all over your table. Although this table is pretty easy to, to clean up. It's just a um, tile. Uh, uh, not ceramic. I'm not sure what it's made of. It's kind of like a stone. But it washes up easy if I get markers on it. Sky at the top. Put this in. Make sure it is centered right.
All right, for this, I want to do one more thing. I'm going to take a marker on the flat side, and I'm just going to color it, just give a little bit of an edge on it, sort of a frame. And I think I will use dimensionals to bring that up. And there we have it, the front of our card. I will put a message on a white card to go inside, to go along with the birth the birthday idea. And this would be an awesome card for a guy. It's There's nothing feminine about it, but it could be for a girl too. Because sometimes it's hard to find guy cards. I think I'll just keep that taped together because I'm probably going to use that again because that's a good size. I feel like that's a really good size. I will probably use that frame again for another scene. Um, these, I got them from Waffle Flower, and it's really cool. They come on this magnetic board. That is such a smart idea. Okay. Let's actually take this part off. They come with a magnetic board. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Look what I just did. I just messed it all up. I'd rather not have that big old card there anyways. Okay. <laughs> let me let me fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. But how awesome is that? That it comes with the magnetic board. That's a lot of different frames. Very useful. These smaller ones can be used for sentiments. Cool. You know, I could probably cut that and put it inside a case. Yeah. That's actually what I wanted to do because this is actually bigger than... I can cut that and stick it right in here. Is there... No. No, there's no glue on the back. Okay, I'll have to trim it a little bit. It just needs to be a little bit narrower and a little bit shorter. But then I can put it in here and that'll be a, just a better way to keep it because I hate sticking them inside this plastic. So I used my new cutter and cut everything down so that it will fit in this case. And you can buy these cases from Stampin' Up. Because I like it when everything fits the same size and I can put it on my shelf and store it better. Now this, since it doesn't have a sticky back on it, I'm going to use these, which I have been using them to put on the backs of uh, stamps that are that don't work very well. But I'm disappointed with it because they, they peel off. I'll find it works better to peel it up in the middle. It's easier to grab that edge than the outside. I went through all of my stamps. It did not have a cling to them. Like some of the rubber stamps uh, I bought not knowing that they were rubber stamps and I didn't get the wood with it. So now that's glued in there. But yeah, I love the idea of a magnet. I'm so happy that it came with the magnet. I did not know. I was surprised when that came in. I used this stamp for the front of the card and I combined this message and this message for inside the card and I finished it off with another stamp. So many times I will use different stamp collections. This one came from Hobby Lobby um, just to get the message that I want for my card. I try to make the whole card have meaning. Okay, God wanted to brighten up the world since we have a nature scene that works. So he made you. Time to celebrate. Happy birthday. So it all flows together very nicely. I try to think about the message as well as the design of the card. And this is a perfect card for a guy. And I hope they don't think about that stump, an old stump as being cut down. I hope that doesn't give a wrong message, but they probably won't even think about it. 
Only I would have thought of that. But I think that turned out pretty decent. And when I started, all I had was a thought. This is a stump and green grass. The rest of it, you just, you saw it evolve. And th that's kind of how I do cards. I just start with an idea and I go with it and I think about it as I'm going and I wind up coming up with some ideas as it evolves. Hope this uh, gives you some ideas.